Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Ampliverse Book Club. This month, we read this beautiful novel by the equally beautiful man. We Were Dreamers, an immigrant superhero origin story by Simu Liu. So here is the lineup of today's book club. First off, you have another underdog story of overachievement. Great. Just what we needed. It's RJ. Hello. (laughs) Just what we needed. Just what we needed. We just need another another one. Thank you. (laughs) And then uh, joining us in our book club discussion this month, we've got Strong heart, beautiful ligaments, and a soul made of spun sugar. It's Allie. Hi, Allie. (laughs) Oh, my ligaments. They're beautiful. (laughs) Uh, I just, that pull quote, I think it was from Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, it was Ryan Reynolds clearly describing how beautiful Simu Liu's ligaments are. But I think we need Mm, to, gorgeous. we need to compliment ligaments a lot more. I think it's underappreciated, you know. It keeps us whole, it keeps us standing up. (laughs) keeps us together (laughs) literally (laughs) yes uh all right so today we're discussing we were dreamers and we're going to start off the discussion right away with talking about how did we like this book ali welcome back i want to ask you you, what did you think of we were dreamers okay well i'll say from the get-go i i don't marvel uh, the the only Marvel movie that I have seen is Black Panther. Um, oh, that's so, a good one to be like. That it's good I, to hold yeah, out on. That I, one, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. I feel like if I were like the only Marvel movie I have seen is um, the one the that's Hulk, excellent, <laughs> the Hulk with Edward Norton. Um, <laughs> oh no! Uh, it's like, um, I thought it was really good. I had absolutely no expectations going in. I didn't really know anything about Simu Liu. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I thought he had a really fun voice. Yeah. Um, and just seemed like it was just like a very approachable book where it was yes. just like, this is what my life is. And, you know, doesn't take himself too seriously. Um, and I really enjoyed that. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a fun read. And I felt like I came away from it. You know, will I see a Marvel movie? I, I don't know. But if he writes another book, will I read it? Absolutely. Oh, that's nice. That's I. I'm sure if he ever hears this, which I know he will, because he's a big <laughs> fan of the show. Yes. Um, that he would really love that because I. I mean, obviously, the book talks about the different pressures that he experienced growing up. Um, but one of the things that he was like commented on like early in his life was like he has a gift for like telling stories or whatever. And I think he does a really good job with this book that. Um, Yeah, he has like such a unique voice. If you've ever seen him in, um, if you've seen him in SNL, when he guest starred, if you've seen his interviews, he's like very millennial in a sense of like, he's like kind of self-deprecating, like very self-aware of like what he looks like, what he does. And he's like, yeah, like you can tell that he's really like owned up to like what he is, which reading the book, you can kind of see like that journey of how he got there and it kind of, yeah, you can really get a sense of that voice, which is interesting. This is our second celebrity memoir. And that's mm-hmm. a very, like, I feel like that's a really good trait of what a good celebrity memoir is that you immediately can hear their voice. Even if you don't know them or if, you know, like Mariah, there's that fantasy of her, but like you are in that fantasy when you're reading it, you know, like it has to have that. Wait, I've, I've read, it's our third because we read Rachel Blooms. That was the first oh, that's right. exactly. Yes, Rachel Bloom okay. too. That's the thing. You have to, I feel like you really have to nail down like your voice and like what mm-hmm. people know of you and what they hear of you to really like, you know, sink them in right away. But yeah, I I definitely like his voice in this book. I think sometimes I was like, oh my God, this is how I talk. And it kind of annoyed me a, a, a couple of times because I was like, oh, like, yeah, this is literally how I talk. <laughs> it's projecting. It's projecting. But you know what? Uh, it's good. It's good stuff. Yeah, I definitely... I definitely want to like talk about this, like, yeah, this sense of like him being very self-aware of who he he is and how it kind of goes through in the book because. I really, I will say though, uh, self-awareness except about his looks because he constantly was like, I'm no Henry Golding. And I was like, excuse me. Excuse me. (laughs) 
I know. He like sure. bring it up sometimes <laughs> of like, yeah, I got cast as this because of my abs, but like I'm not perfect because of that. Which it goes back to like I feel like very millennial. Like we always couch ourselves of like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, like that's definitely one thing. Like he he kind of um he had a journey obviously to like find himself what he was good at because um in the book it, it accounts a lot of like his pressure of his family moving to Canada and at a young age like having to live up to his parents expectations of him um but really struggling to find that because it wasn't in like acad- academia like his parents were uh and it kind of went from like starting a boy band to uh, working at Abercrombie, which I have a very funny story of when I first moved to America, my earliest memory uh, was going to the Grove in LA and seeing like two shirtless Americans in, standing in front of the, the Abercrombie and Finch. And I was like, this is it. This is America, baby. I'm here, USA. <laughs> Yes. Uh, that was like a huge thing. I remember the like store fronts of just the abs. <laughs> like mm-hmm. the giant picture Lit- of the abs. The bags, like their bags were literally just like pecs. Yeah. And it was like, why? Yeah. We it, was, it truly was a moment. And even like he even talks about like how he he he's fallen into like obviously hard times and and just because he was trying to like just so eager and earnest. Like he talks about like getting Craigslist Craigslist scammed um, of like, I don't remember how it was like $2,500, right? Like it was something crazy like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But it just, it just kind of like, I really appreciated just the, the struggles, like reading about the struggles because it felt very real. Like it felt real in a sense of like, these are just small decisions that he's making that you don't really know how it's going to end up. But like, I, I remember like thinking like, obviously in act three, that's like basically his, is like career, like his acting career. And there's a huge gap of just like the same thing over and over again from like 2012, 2013, when he graduated college up until basically when he got Kim's convenience in like 2017, mm-hmm. 2018. Cause it's like, you just have to keep doing these small auditions. You got to do these small things, you know, just to kind of make ends meet, which like, I really appreciate it. It's like, Oh, I'm getting a real, the nitty gritty of, of, of Canadian Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Yes. Canadian Hollywood. I, I really appreciate it. You know, I think in thinking about the book, I don't, you know, I don't know if this is like a take or something like that, but there was a part of me that felt like it was also kind of like a self-help book. Yeah. Because it, it really totally. like, uh, you know, a self-help and like how to kind of guide. Um, and I thought that was a really interesting thing that he did, because I think that's probably, you know, when he talked about uh, later on going on like college tours, es- essentially yeah. like going and speaking at colleges. Like, I'm sure this is a lot of the stuff that he gets asked about and that there's a market for things like that. But yeah. I just really appreciated um, hearing about the drive that he has, because I think sometimes, you know, um, you get, you kind of sell yourself on this, like, and then it just happened, right? Like, it's like, and then I, you know, I went out on the audition and it's like, no, like you have to like put your feet on the pavement. You have to do things that you think are below you. You have to, you know, like just go out there and sell yourself for as long as possible. (laughs) And to like, it's like, it's like, it's literally work. It is a job. It's eight to five or whatever crazy hours are going to be on set. And, um, I just really appreciate that he didn't try to put like the Hollywood spin on it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. he didn't try to Hollywoodize his own story. He like yeah. told all of the shitty stuff he had to go through in order to get to where he is. And I think, I think that's part of like, to me, what probably makes the most successful kind of actor is the person who yeah. doesn't like, who thinks that it could all go away in a second. Right. Yeah. Um, And I'm sure, like, as, you know, as an Asian man in the film industry, it's probably Mm -hmm. even more heightened for him where he's like, you know, we're in this great moment 
of like kind of this cultural awakening right now and Hollywood's becoming more diverse. But who's to say that in 10 years, like that's still going to be like the trendy thing. I hate to call it trendy, you know, but it's um, so I don't I I, I just uh, that portion of the book. That was what I really appreciated about it was just him like talking about what it took for him to to really get down and do what he wanted to do and I think the one other thing I'll say that too is that like I'm sure to him like in the moment it felt like work but I think what he was saying is that like this was was his passion and you know like if it's really what you're passionate about then you know you should be able to do it even when it gets hard yeah 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 I, I think one of the things that was interesting to read about was obviously, yeah, this was happening between like the aughts, right. Um, or the tens. Um, and he even said like, he didn't realize that it would be such a, a big deal to like represent because he was just kind of like, it's the understanding that, you know, we, I am one of three Asian actors in Toronto. So like, I am going to be up against the same roles as these two other people. And when he got Kim's convenience, like he, yeah, like he ended up doing a lot of these like college speaking engagements to like make ends meet, but also realize that like it became a responsibility of his of like, we all became like spokespeople of diversity because our show is like the one, like, you know, all Asian cast, which was kind of like really eye opening to read about when the show was kind of like uh, when he, like, their ex- their experience of, like, their character, like, his own character was, like, being written less because they were mm, trying yeah. to, like, put in more, like, well-known actor, like, white actors that I was like, oh, that's so sad that, like, that mm-hmm. is happening. Even though, like, they created the show knowing one thing, but when it evolves into, like, a different beast, like, you really, you know, I was like really sad to to read because I was like, oh, I love Kim's Convenience and I know how important it was to have this show. Uh, so, but yeah, it's very interesting to kind of like be faced with that responsibility and he was able to like uh, kind of like take it and, and also be like, I will, you know, do this, but also it'll, it's a great way to make money. <laughs> like it was, yeah. mm-hmm. it was good for him. Um I, and it also made me think about, though, like when you were talking about um, him describing all of the hardships that he worked through, I couldn't help but feel like he was writing it because he was trying to still, in some aspect, try to be like, look, I am also struggling, mom and dad, like how you struggled to make your dream happen. And this is oh. not like, you know, like this is a constant thing that's happening in the book of like his parents uh, moved to Canada, basically like left him with his grandparents so that they could, you know, establish a life in Canada. And then when it was right for them, they were able to afford to kind of bring him over. They they did that. And it was kind of like a, re- it was very hard because their parents were first time parents for a five-year-old or like a three-year-old. And for him, it was the first time having to like be in a new environment with, with these new pa- pa- parental units that had, you know, that he had no experience with and... Oh, yeah, I just I I couldn't help but like see that theme of he's constantly trying to prove himself to his parents, which I I think is just especially for immigrants like that's I wrote that down of like they are making the biggest sacrifice so that you don't have to, and I think like that just weighed heavily on him literally in his entire life. It wasn't until he was in a Marvel movie to be like, look, you don't have to worry about me anymore. <laughs> You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was really mm-hmm. sad to read that. Like, even as someone that could be a success, like as successful as him, like that still happens. Which yeah, it's hard to you know, it's hard to erase because yeah, you just always know that that is a sacrifice that your parents made to make your dreams come true. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, I really did like. We didn't get a lot, but we got a few of like. Simu Liu's dating life, which I thought was just very funny because, like I said, he's very dreamy, but uh, very private also. So, like, it was fun to, like, see, like, what it, what it was like. And it was interesting that the one he talked about, May, was, like, the main relationship that he really dove into a lot more. And he even, like, he was saying, like, 
in writing the book, I contacted her again just to like ask what that relationship was like, and she really let him have it. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, <laughs> girl, maybe temper it a little. No, she was fully like, oh, this is for your book. Okay, great. You were trying too hard. You just wanted everything to be perfect right away, and when it wasn't, you would take it out on me and be manipulative. And he was like, oh my god. <laughs> it was really like really eye-opening to to read but then also you could tell that he was like i am literally i'm repeating patterns and like behaviors that my parents were doing to me so i was like whoa yikes Mm -hmm. so i i appreciated that and you know what not all heroes wear capes and may was like i i will take i will i will stand up for what's right (laughs) i can just imagine her like finding out like living this is gonna living her life as living she's doing now, and she'd be like, Whatever. "My ex boyfriend is a Marvel superhero," <laughs> and then she saw her chance and she took it. Yeah, like <laughs> she was Absolutely. like, "I'm sick and tired of all my girlfriends being <laughs> like, you could have had a Marvel superhero." Like, <laughs> no, I am setting the record straight. He was not a good boyfriend. <laughs> he did I not know. treat me the way. <laughs> I know. What She's a like, slave. So that's that on that. Yeah. <laughs> no one's ever gonna blame me again uh it was so insane and i i do appreciate that like that was part of his assessment of what his life was like during that time like he talked about getting into college and you know the whole super fresh situation of like Mm -hmm. he was just so obsessed with people wanting to to like him that it was all kind of like in one big swirl and it pretty much kind of like led his personality of like if you don't like me then there's something wrong and i have to fix it or like screw you, you know? And so Mm -hmm. I appreciated that. And it, it made me kind of like, okay, I just wanted to like, know, like, what is this type? Like what, what type of (laughs) woman does he want? I just want to know for educational purposes. Yes. For educational purposes. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe that'll be the next book. Maybe that's the next book. It is funny. Cause like he, he was on an episode of selling sunset. Uh, he was buying a house from Chriselle, and I think that went around of like, did he date Chriselle? And he was like, nope, literally just buying a house. <laughs> so. People can't just live their lives. Everything. No. We're just so wait desperate. for the book, everyone. Just wait for the book. <laughs> Whoever you want to know about, just wait for their book, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> They'll tell it. Um, okay, so yeah, so I guess like general feelings that we both really like the book, and I think really appreciated Simu being candid and honest um, and with this voice. I think what I really want to chat about, because I did not expect this from his story, was just all of, like, his full mid-2000s, like, teenage angst, which, like, I feel like is very relatable. We all did it. We were all there. We were all, uh, we all had dark hair, you know? We all (laughs) wore chain uh, wallets. Like, we were all... (laughs) we were all there um but i i kind of was wanted to like see you know your thoughts on just like how you reacted to and you know it's just this whole basically all of act two like all of the second half of act two of like really just how terrible of a situation that he was in because he was obviously (laughs) acting out in angst because of just not being able to live up to his parents um like you know, pressures and, you know, it, e- it even got violent and that's something I'd want to talk about after, but I wanted to know like, what, what, how did you kind of like take away from all of that teenage, uh, angst? Yeah. I mean, I was appreciative that he was so forthcoming about it. I, yeah. I, I felt like, I mean, obviously that was a really big portion of the book, um, that I think doesn't always get brought up in like celebrity memoirs or those high school years yeah. and what's going on. And so like, I loved learning about, um, kind of how he discovered the things that he was passionate about. And, yeah. um, and I appreciated, um, just his, you know, being forthcoming. One of the things that, you know, was interesting to me was kind of seeing how, like, in this kind of, like, high-performing school, yeah. like, how he was, like, all these kids, like, really care about this. And, like, I really don't care about that. Like, this, what I want to focus on is my boy band. Like, what mm-hmm. I want to focus on is performing in front of the school. And, um, you know, I think it's just one of those things where... um 
it, it's just a reminder that like, you know, if, if you find something that you're, you're really passionate about, it's important that we all be supportive of it. Yeah. Um, especially with kids, you know, and I, one of the things I, you know, I did have a hard time with, and, and we can talk about this more when we talk, you know, about his relationship with his parents that yeah. I always just like get a really bad feeling about when people are like looking back on it and they're like, well, I know I didn't make it easy on my parents. And it's like, but you were a kid, you know? Yeah. I, it's yeah. one of those things where it's like, I, I hate when people like make it seem like it's hard to love them, right? Where it's like, well, you know, I'm really lucky. Like, it's not like I made things any easier for, I just, Mm -hmm. and I don't know. I, I just, that was what I struggled with because it's not like he was like, you know, committing, like committing crimes. Like he was just being a teenager, right? Like he wasn't, there wasn't anything that he was doing that was going to like permanently affect the world, you know, negatively. Um, And so I, I do, there was a part of me that kind of was like, you know, wanted to kind of like give little Simu a hug and be like, no, like, you know, like you were, you're being a kid. Like you're doing the things you're supposed to be doing. You're learning how to be your own person. You're learning how to like, you know, be an independent person away from your parents. So, um, there was still a part of me that was like, I hope, I hope he's still healing and I hope he's still, you know, working on his relationship with his parents because yeah. Yeah. I think this, you know, it was very clear that there's like not only a generational shift, right. Of like his parents being like, you have to hit the top marks in order to be like numbers equal success. And you have to hit Mm -hmm. those six, to be successful so you have a good life but then yeah there's just a a complete like absence of like being a child (laughs) or like just letting them be just experience the world because I think it's that it's that it's that struggle of like what is it that they're the parents are fighting for like it's so that he and he even says it later on like uh thinking about it he says that like they they've sacrificed a lot so that I can have the freedom to like do what I want and be happy. But that came from his parents not doing that or like not expressing that and him trying to process all of this information, Mm -hmm. you know, through years of just like being away from them and like have taking a step back and like really focusing in on himself to really think about that, why they were doing that. And so I, yeah, I, I, I wish he was able to like, be a teenager because that's the thing yeah like we don't we didn't know any better when we were teenagers like we really didn't so it was very hard to kind of like expect that like we should be like as functioning adults already um Mm -hmm. yeah it's just very hard but i also can tell that like that's also you know like first only only son's thing like if if these parents had like another kid like obviously that kid would have a have it a lot easier yeah um one of the things that I did want to talk about is like the the violence that was like kind of put on Simu as a teenager, even as a kid. So like I think I think he does a really good job of kind of describing how it's evolved. Because even in the beginning, it it seemed very much just like you know disciplining, very like classic. You know, for me, it's like very classic like uh, immigrant things of like okay, if you want to be an adult so much, then go ahead, stand outside. Well, you can be outside the house or whatever, like stuff like that. But there, I did appreciate that he didn't shy away from being as descriptive as he was. Like he he really kind of wrote it when he was in that perspective, whether he was a kid or as a teen. Um, but for the most part, really like wrote about it as like a child. Like even he, if he was in high school when they were kind of like doing those violent things to him, he was processing them as a child, not being able to, uh, yeah, not being able to process. So yeah, like I, I really appreciated that, that he was really honest and upfront about like, when I, when I told my dad, that uh i didn't get like a good score he was like it's gonna be okay and then as soon as we got to the kitchen or like for to eat dinner that night he said that i failed and my mom kicked me out and like locked me outside it was just Mm -hmm. like you know like those things of like 
like not establishing that trust with your parents. And then that just kind of like, you could tell that that was like a seed that just kind of grew into really never trusting them the entire time that he was living with them. And it was just, um, it just, that rift kind of got bigger and bigger of like his dad and his mom being, you know, um, violent towards him and hitting him to the point of him, you know, not coming home for a couple of days and, mm -hmm. and having them kind of like force them to realize that what they've done kind of like is bringing that, causing him to do that, but then still not really kind of connecting after that of like what I did was wrong. It, it, just no one knowing how to process emotions and mm -hmm. it just it was sad because yeah. they kept taking it out on each other you know right yeah and it's one of those things where it's like it, I, I think you're like you're making the situation even worse you know where it's like the thing that you're upset about your reaction to that is making it worse and it, yeah. and it is very much like I can really relate to that kind of like teenage feeling of like this is like when he was talking about like like, this is where I find my power or, like, my agency, mm -hmm. where it's, like, fine, like, hit me again, right? Yeah. Of, you know, uh, where it's, like, okay, I, like, I can't, I'm in this situation where I'm, I'm being abused or I'm being hit and, like, I can't stop that from happening, but I can control how I'm reacting to it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's, it's something that's, you know, I, I, when we read um, a fall love story and I said, like, I, you know, I don't have culture, like I, I'm just yeah. a white person. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I always find, you know, I always find when I get these kind of glimpses into um, lives of people who are different. And I, I thought it was kind of, you know, it was interesting for, to see it on the flip side of that, too, where, you know, he was talking about going over to his white friends houses and he was saying the way that the parents were treating yeah. their white friends. Yeah. And, and like how that difference was, and and I think it's it's really interesting to me to think about like when we talk about like, um, it, it's just interesting to me when we talk about kind of cross cultural relations and when people are moving here from different places and how we're like in this kind of melting pot is, and, and just thinking about the way that like children are raised in different parts of the world mm -hmm. and like, um, and I I find I found myself you know kind of butting up against that a lot and I think that I think that especially just like with my brother and sister-in-law now having like this one-year-old and kind of yes, seeing yeah. what they're going through and like figuring out how parenting works. And mm -hmm. it's just such an interesting thing for me to, to kind of, I, I don't know, just think about how parenting works in different parts of the world yeah. and um, what it, how, how harder it must have made him to feel like if he had wanted and I'm not saying that, you know, that was his primary goal, but like how much more polarizing kind of that feeling of assimilation would be if you're going mm -hmm. to your friend's house and you're seeing these living environments that are so different from yours. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I And so I, I, I think, you know, you're right. I was um, – I thought it was very um, not – not helpful. I'm trying to think of the, the right word. I thought it was, I just thought it was, um, I, I, I'm glad that he shared his story that yeah. way. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for his candor and for not yeah. kind of trying to, to sugarcoat it and to show that like, you know, this is what his life was like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I was very much, um, I, because it was like taking us through that journey, I found myself kind of like savoring small glimpses of like whenever he did find something that made him happy. Cause I was like, okay, there's something. And I, I, I just think about when I was, you know, his age and like just trying everything, just seeing what would be something that I would be into. And yeah, like, you know, for both of us, like we both did theater in, in high school. So it was like, being able to like say like oh i found something that i i was very lucky that my parents like they liked me being a showman so they were like oh yeah he's in the show he's in that show um so i was very i i felt like i was very lucky to have that that support even though they didn't really understand like i didn't have to explain what by my birdie was or you know like <laughs> they just were like oh you're on stage that's something and i mm -hmm. i i definitely i wanted to I found myself a lot of just like telling, you know, in reading, I'm like, just, yes, just keep hanging on to that. Like, yes, you love doing the backflip. Just keep, just stick to that. Like, honestly, like, 
Uh, and when he was doing like all of his like intramurals, like with sports and even with his dancing, like in college, so I was like, it, it, you can definitely tell like a clear shift because I feel like if you go to college now and those are things like, those are things that colleges will value. And I don't know. I think he was just really in like a, a different place. Almost feels like he, he would have really thrived if he was in college, like a lot later in life than when he yeah. went. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I yeah. will. Yeah. I, one of the things that I was going to mention about the high school thing, and, and that was really interesting. I think it's going to be interesting now for like celebrities our age when there's this digital record of like, yeah. every, like when he was pulling emails, I know, yes. <laughs> text messages and things like that, because you know, yeah. the technology was there. And so, yeah. um, I don't know that I would have been like have emails from that long ago but yeah. um i thought that was another kind of um it, uh, an interesting thing that i think we haven't really seen yet just because you know that technology didn't exist when a lot of these people were writing you know memoirs and stuff yeah. so um i appreciated that and and the mentions of like you know i aming after school yeah and, yeah um yeah, yeah that was insane when he was like msn messenger which was my big thing like i was on okay. msn all the time and like when he was like, my dad reads my chat, so he would like write fake chats of like, yes. oh yeah, I gotta be careful because my dad, and, and it was, <laughs> it's insane, but I don't blame him. I was like, I probably have done that. Like, m my parents never did, but I would do that in a heartbeat if they did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, oh my gosh. Oh my God, and I did appreciate like constantly being like, I did this, you can look it up on YouTube, I did this, please don't Google it. Like when he talked about beach bingo, which in my mind is just, I guess a bingo app, but it's like hot people telling the numbers. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. He described it in such detail that I'm like, I think that's what it's like. And every time he kept bringing it up, he was like, please do not an app that never should have existed. I know, but that you get to the point where like, does, does he want us to see it? Does though? he want us to like, like what could it be? I mean, I, yeah, that that is like a yeah a fun um, thing that like yeah this is in full record. So when we write our celebrity memoirs, people can just YouTube this book club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, honestly, they can they can Google our high school productions and see what we do, you know like that oh, stuff no. like that. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully not. If I ever make it. Uh, to Hollywood, people can Google me doing uh, John Hancock in 1776. Because, you know, famous Asian John Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> you were the original Hamilton. Before, I, before Lin before, Manuel Miranda honestly, did it, you did it. Honestly, he lit, a young Lin Manuel was at my high school. He <laughs> just won the Tony for best uh, best musical for In the Heights, uh, and he Heights, happened to yep. be in Phoenix, Arizona, watching my yeah. production. <laughs> Actually, it was it was because you know he used to be a substitute teacher, so he was he was he was there. He was yes, he was subbing. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I know I just won the Tony, but I already signed up to sub, so I guess I'll show up. I keep my commitments. Oh I my keep God. my commitments. Uh, but yeah, I definitely really appreciate. It. And I think like, I don't know, obviously like the Marvel situation, I, I did appreciate that he wrote about it and yes, was it cheesy at the end? Absolutely. But you know what? After what he went through, he was so like, it's fun to be like super earnest about just like, he was so excited when he was an extra, like it's that energy going into like this, like what could be like a huge, like literally the biggest deal of his entire life uh, to be just like. Yeah, I'm eating up every single thing, seeing Aquafina, seeing them, you know, slate. Like, it's just all, mm -hmm. I'm taking it all in and knowing that, like, this is a culmination of, like, a literal uh, journey, not just in my generation, but, like, the, you know, my parents, so that I can mm -hmm. be right here. It was a very nice ending. It was, yes, it was cheesy, but I was like, I couldn't see it any other way to end it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, but yeah, I'm very, I was very happy to read this and I was very, um, very excited. I didn't, I talked about it in the last episode, but he was here in Chicago to do like a book tour and there oh. were just tickets of him at the music box theater that I was like, sure, I'll go. And that's how I got the book. Like it, the book came with a copy and, uh, or the book came with the ticket and he was very, yeah, like 
exactly just like how the book is like very open and candid about his experiences very relatable he kept cracking jokes the entire time you can tell this is a guy who really just loves being like not performing. service to people but yes performing yeah like just making people having happy a good, exactly and you you can just get that vibe and I, i'm I'm really happy that he uh, he took the time to write the book and kind of like explain how he found that because you could from the book realizing that like it was really hard to find that. Um, and so I don't know. It just makes me very happy that we just we just have a good guy out there making yeah. million dollar movies. You know, <laughs> they're not all jerks. Yes. <laughs> right. Get that coin, Simu. Get that coin, get that, Simu. Get that Marvel coin. Yes, Absolutely. Absolutely exploit Marvel for all of its worth, <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> Thank you for uh, reading this book. I'm so excited to uh, announce our next book for next month. We will be reading a book called The Book Eaters by Sunni Dean. Okay, fun fact. This was published literally on my birthday this year, August 2nd, 2002. So this is a fresh... We are going to be 2022. On the Oh, yes, yes. Two thousand. I'm just so in, like, Simu's teenage years right now. I can't even... I'm stuck. I'm mm. stuck in the aughts. But yes, um, this is a, a fresh new book, so this is exciting because we'll be, like... People are going to be tuning in to know what mm -hmm. we think. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's just, it's just right at... We're on the pulse. Yes. Uh, okay, so this is The Book Eaters by Sunny Dean. Truth is found between the stories we're fed and the stories we hunger for. Out on the Yorkshire moors live a secret line of people for whom books are food <laughs> and who retain all of a book's content after eating it. To them, spy novels are a peppery snack. Romance novels are sweet and delicious. Eating a map can help them remember destinations and children when they misbehave are forced to eat dry, musty pages from dictionaries. <laughs> musty. Mm. Love it. Devin is part of the family, an old and reclusive clan of book eaters. Her brothers grow up feasting on stories of valor and adventure, and Devin, like all other book eater women, is raised on a carefully curated diet of fairy tales and cautionary stories. Oh, I didn't realize gender was at play. Uh, this is my first time reading this, so I'm like, oh, oh wow. okay. Yes. Oh. But real life doesn't always come with happy endings, as Devin learns when her son is born with a rare and darker kind of humor. Not for books, but for human minds. <gasps> Ack! <laughs> a darkly <laughs> sweet pastry of a book about family betrayal and the lengths we go to for the ones we love. A delicious modern day fairy tale. Um, wow. So that is the book eaters. This is our first fantasy book. I've never really read like do, you've had. You've read more like fantasy fantasy books, right? Oh yeah, I I love yeah. fantasy. Yeah, yeah. This is like because my I first find, foray. I find with fantasy, I'm I'm much more forgiving of the characters because yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I think when I'm reading books that are set in like the real world, that I'm like, mm mm. <laughs> They would never your say actions that. Are, your actions are reprehensible, <laughs> and yes. I cannot sympathize with you. Whereas in fantasy, if someone like you know they like murder, and I'm like, yeah, that's what you need to do to survive. Those are the stakes. The yeah, <laughs> if, the yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, they would eat you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very excited. I I think like I started reading The Hobbit when I was little, and then was like, I am too young to read this. So uh, <laughs> I'm very excited to. To, to dive deep into the world of dark fantasy like this one. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. scary. Yeah. So <laughs> you can get a copy of The Book Eaters uh, and all of the books we read here on the Ampleverse Book Club in the Ampleverse Book Shop. And if you purchase a book there, it not only helps the Ampleverse, but it also helps a local bookstore in your area. So you can go to bookshop.org slash shop slash the Ampleverse. Thank you so much for watching or listening along to this episode of the Ampleverse Book Club. You can find and follow us on social media at the Ampliverse on Twitter and on Instagram and you can keep the conversation going across the Ampliverse by joining the Discord server as well linked on this episode and finally if you love the show and the others we do here at the Ampliverse feel free to tip a dollar or two you can do that on our coffee linked on this episode which helps keep the lights on in our universe Allie thank you so much for joining me today hope you have a 
uh, a marvelous day. Would you would you do more Marvel? Would you watch Shang Chi? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I will say it I- doesn't go as deep. Obviously, it's like Black Panther and like very much like this is a movie for the diaspora. I think yeah. like Shang-Chi is very good. It's a good family story because it's also okay. about like his relationship with his father, his mother and his sister. Um, but okay. told in like, you know, like the Kung Fu lore. So it like it's it harkens back to a lot of those like, you know, Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee Kung Fu movies. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good time. And Michelle Yeoh is in it. She, you know, never okay, well, you know, I did. We read Jurassic Park and I watched Jurassic Park. That's so true. That's true. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'll find my way to watching. Does that mean you're also going to watch Actually. Glitter uh, down the road <laughs> from where I came? You know what? Maybe I should have done. Uh, you know? Yes. <laughs> This is a new trend. We'll have to start this new trend now. (laughs) Yes, adaptations. Adaptations. Well, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And everyone, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Till then, read on. Bye. Bye.